for the last three Boston marathons, I've been a guide for a blind athlete named Ron Hackett. And uh, the first year that we ran together in Boston, which was in 2011, Ron uh, came first in the blind and visually impaired category. And last year uh, we, we ran in uh, 333. So that was uh, quite an experience to be able to guide somebody through that historic race. This year was, this particular year was so different for us as volunteers. We're so used to crowds being around us. And um, as we're handing out the medals, we are advised that we must look for the official bib. So we put it around their neck and off they go and we get their stories and hugs, etc. So we had the runners coming through and uh, we saw the first bomb go off. Well, we saw shoulder height, so we saw smoke, we heard it. And then moments later, of course, the next one goes off. But what we have in front of us is a different story. We first have all the people who have already run through and they don't know what's going on behind them. So they're all still excited and they're getting their bibs and everybody's joyous to the crowd starting to change in front of us to where they're almost like deer in headlights. They've got this panic look on their face. Now we still don't know what's going on. So we're handing them their, their, their medals, but we're not getting that feedback of exactly what's been going on. But we know something's been going on. And, and as we're handing out to those people, the second bomb goes off. And so we're all kind of standing there and we all actually just kind of stopped. And we looked and we're looking at each other, the runners, the volunteers, and we just don't know what's, you know, what do we do now? And then we have the crowd of people who have run through it and are just running for their life. They're in panic mode. So we had to keep asking them, like, just open your jacket, show us your bib. And we were literally almost throwing the medals at them. And uh, it was really, uh, <laughs> so surreal to all of a sudden look and there's no runners in front of us and what do we do? So I did my head count and then I realized that um, I'm okay. Um, all the people that who I knew personally were, had already gone through. So we're waiting and there's nobody in front of us and then they say, um, grab your bags and run. So uh, Ron and I came across the finish line in uh, 3.33, which was, uh, he was ecstatic with that time and it was, uh, it was a pretty good day for running. The weather was great. We were really pumped. It was a fantastic experience. Uh, we got our medals from Marion. So I was down on Boylston Street, uh, about three or four blocks from the finish line, uh, heading towards the hotel. And I heard an explosion. And I didn't really know what it was at the time. So I stopped and I turned around and I could see the smoke rising above the finish line. And I had no idea what it could possibly be, um, but not thinking that it could be a bomb. And while I was looking down Boylston, the second one went off, so I actually saw that explosion and I thought, that really doesn't seem right. Uh, when I got back to the hotel, the first thing I did was turn on the TV and I just saw uh, carnage at the finish line. It looked like a war zone and it was horrifying because I knew that Marion was working at the finish line handing out medals. And I had no idea if, uh, if she had been affected by this or what was happening. Uh, there was no phone service, I had no way to reach her and there was nothing I could do but watch the horror on, on television. And it took over an hour um, before Marion finally made her way back to the hotel. And when I saw her, we just sort of collapsed into each other's arms and uh, we were never so glad to see each other. At that time, we had both decided that it, it was just such a horrible thing. It had ruined uh, the Boston experience. Uh, I've, been, I've done it 13 times and it had always been such a positive thing. But after that, it just tainted everything and it just tainted the whole experience, the memories of it, and I said, I'm never coming back. But then slowly, as, as it became less surreal and, and I began to get a different perspective on it, I came to the realization that not only would I go back, but I have to go back. We, we cannot let something like this ruin the most historic and prestigious marathon in the world. We kind of looked at each other and said, yeah, we're going to go back. So uh, next year, I'll be giving uh, Tim another medal like this one, like I gave him last year, and uh, it's going to be exciting. <laughs>